Wish to gain a remix with a con. You're one wrong. Where this man come from? Bojan, Senegal, Bojan. For Jamaican city, Bojan. West Africa, who oh, North Africa? Oh, East Africa, oh, Addis Ababa. Oh, have the same vision. Muslim and Christian. Good day, boys and girls, from coast to coast and around the whole wide entire world. Welcome to a place we call Vegan Dream Donuts. We are live in full effect. Got my brethren with me. Yes, family. Bomani Tayemba. Yes, from it. Africa for the Africans. Oh, yeah. We going in today. You already know it's your host, Ross Isis. I ain't got my homeboy with me on this episode, my main man, Rebel. He's going to be on the next one, you know, but I'm going to build with my homeboy from a long, long time, Bumani, who have been making big moves back and forth to the continent. So we're going in. We're going back to the motherland. What we say? Africa for the Africans, at home and what? Abroad. So we're going in. And you know you know where we at, right? And you know what we're doing. This is what? The Think Champs. Yes, Absolutely, indeed. family. Think Champs, family. For real, for real. So we're building, you know what I mean? Bumani, man, good to see you, King. Uh, absolutely, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yes, indeed. You know, you know I've, been, I've been on that um, November, December move to Africa. I so. know. I can't see you. You're on the continent so much now, man. Big yeah, things so, developing. Yeah, I want so, you to tell us more about what's going on, man. But, you know, first, introduce yourself. Let them know who you are and what you do, man. Uh, absolutely. Uh, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and I am um, this, uh, a brother that's uh, in the Pan-African movement and in the Black Panthers movement, and literally this... Um, I've dedicated my energy since I was in my mid-twenties to literally just do the works from us studying to making our moves to Africa, to documenting it and sharing it. So our business is called Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment, and we, we started uh, the operation before we even started operation. I was mm -hmm. doing trips to like uh, Egypt and Senegal in 2004. See. Now, I went with other people, but I documented those journeys, and those journeys became like the foundation of what we have today. As far as uh, Africa for the Africans, tourism investment, which started in uh, 2006, uh, October specifically. And then we did that first journey, uh, December of 2006. Mm -hmm. And from that time, December 2006, we just completed our 20th journey. And on our 15 year, uh, going to Ghana this December 2021, just wow. literally uh, less than two months ago. Wow. Uh, so in between that time, uh, you have the, a whole lot going on in the world. And regardless of whatever was going on in the world, we made a dedication that we're going to continue going to Africa from 2004 up until now and document our footage of our trips, our tours, our experience, our connections, our wow. networking, and share on a public platform. Mm. For Literally, this has come up on 18 years, brother. Get I mean, it's, we're celebrating so, the 16-year anniversary of Africa for Africans, but it's 18 years since I've been traveling the continent, been to 10 different countries, mm. Ghana, Togo, Benin. Mm -hmm. Senegal and the Gambia, and that's all in um, West Africa. Mm -hmm. Then South Africa, country number six, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, wow. uh, nine countries, wow. and Egypt, ten countries. Mm -hmm. Now we do tours to only seven of those are countries. We don't do tours to Ethiopia, e Egypt, or Kenya. Um, mm -hmm. not, not saying anything, but. I've never done a tour that's, that was my tour to those three countries. See, see, see. Uh, and then altogether, I've um, been traveling since I was about 18, um, since I joined the U.S. Navy. And I've been to close, over 35 countries across six continents, and that's including working with the airlines, uh, including doing this business, and then just making travel and researching, especially you know, about us, because most of the places I've been to, it's, you know, it's black countries or predominantly black countries. True. Uh, so that's been able to, you've been, been able to build a strong energy as far as logistics, operation, uh, being able to deal and handle customers and having things administratively organized because, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's still business. And, and that's the that thing, I, too, I want to, I want you to touch on for us, too, is, you know, the business aspect of it because um, most people think when they leave America, they're just going to move to Africa and they don't do anything but just live off the land. But you have to establish some type of business to feed yourself and educate yourself and educate the people because Africa needs us to come there with our skills, our education, and our tools. You know, So I would like for you to build on that more about the, uh, 
the experience as far as businesses and things that's that's going on in Africa? Absolutely. Yeah. The business aspect come from <clears throat> since we're all in the diaspora and we're making that reconnection bridge to the continent. You know, you can start with just setting up your business here, uh, mm -hmm. whichever way people like to do it. Uh, but it's when you're dealing with international business, you have credentials and you have things set up from the country that you're operating from mm -hmm. and, the, and the country that you're going in. So like Ghana, we have a business office there, mainly for Black Star Pan-African community, but it's our business office. True. Uh, we have a tour guide and other uh, members that operate tours and they have their office and operation there. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to build that relationship and be clear from both standpoints. Like I'm the uh, tour leader, tour organizer, and tour administrator. So I put all the schedule and all those things together. And then I reach out to my partners there in Ghana and you know, you share with them the schedule and you, you, know, you, you get a group to commit to your tour members. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people that this stuff is very you know, intricate to where you have to literally lay things out and then you have to build relationships with the right people to make sure that everything runs smooth and that mm -hmm. your brand is going to carry on. So that, that means you're also getting into training and things like that. But as far as business, uh, you just basically have to just, when you start going to the country, you'll get a feel of how business work. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, what you do is you let your crew in the country operate and handle business. Like example, for Black Star Pan-African community, uh -huh. the entire operation of that whole business was set up there in Ghana. I organized everything in the U.S., but mm -hmm. my corporate attorney there literally did all of the legal paperwork for our, you know, for our incorporation, mm -hmm. and he also did all the legal paperwork to get our land survey and land search. Hold and on, all hold on, hold on, but mind yeah. you're going too fast. Slow up, slow up, because hold on, look here. Now, we're dealing with the land. See, we need to know more about this land. Yes, I'll definitely we'll get into more that. more about uh, the land. So I want to hold on to that because I want to definitely speak on the land and, and the purchasing of the land, the cost of the land, and the uh, convenience of owning land in Africa and uh, the ways that we can build up the land in Africa, you know, collectively. Absolutely. We can definitely get into all of that. I yeah, was trying to give you a My foundation. thing is the collectiveness, you know, because we don't want to be no one away where I'm on all the land by myself and I'm here on this island or this continent by myself. I want to be able to uh, go out the door and network with my people that I even know. Because, I mean, we can move over to Africa's neighbors. You know, we can develop Africa the way we see it over here, and we can be neighbors in Africa. And that's what I'm looking to more get in detail to, because um, the way you have it set, my brother, is beautiful, man. I'm, I'm really proud of the works you've been doing over the years and the education that you've been educating our people over here in the Western Hemisphere about what's actually going on in Africa, because you've been going before pre-COVID. Way before that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you know, there was no mass and all these things and all these mandates, you know, when, when you were first going. So now, in this time, we are, what, 2022? And uh, I'd like to say first, happy Black History Month. Yes, indeed, big up. Happy Black History Month, 365 days of the year. But first off, we got to big up a man whose birthday is today because, you know, they call it Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> today, right? Yeah, but y'all need to be celebrating and, and honoring a man by the name of Frederick Douglass. Because today is Frederick Douglass's birthday, okay. you know what I'm saying? So differently, though, we want to build more on what we can do and how we can build ourselves in Africa. So what would you think would be the best step for ones who are on their first journey? Because you take a, how many people you take on one trip? Uh, it, could be, it, it varies. It um, could be from anywhere from 10 to 40. Those have been the range. Blessings, blessings. So 40 people on a plane coming out the West into the continent. That's beautiful, man. That's, that's a movement. That itself is a movement. So when the people are getting there, what are the procedures they need to do to get themselves into Africa? Uh, yes, as far as the procedure, um, the main thing is um, you, know, you, you, you have to make sure that you're clear on a schedule and the itinerary that we have on our website, mm -hmm. africaforafricans.org. Uh, make sure you're clear on the visa process and things like that. So we literally go into the information with you. Uh, so once you have your uh, visa, once you put your money down for your, your journey, mm -hmm. and and the, and the visas in reference to uh, Ghana, uh, the Gambia, and Tanzania. Those are the three countries that we have on the schedule out of the four countries that require visa. So a question. Does all uh, states in Africa require visas? No. Uh, out of the four countries that we are going to, uh, only three of them require visas. Senegal is the only country that doesn't require a visa. Senegal. So, I hear that. Senegal. So become the core things. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing your tour package... We're going to get your ticket for you, and we're going to get all of your accommodations for you. Mm -hmm. So those things are set. And what then all comes in the accommodations, though? Uh, accommodations um, is uh, your flight package from, like, we're here in Atlanta. So our flight mm -hmm. will go from 
Atlanta to Amsterdam and Amsterdam to Ghana or Amsterdam. Wait, 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 wait. We stopping in Amsterdam first? Yes, we're using Delta K11 oh Air France. Oh, my gosh. You know I burn herbs, you know. So Amsterdam got some weed I need to be smoking, too. You can, so you can, you can stay back long on your return, but that's just the schedule how long we is have. The, how long is it stop in Amsterdam on the way? Um, it varies. It could be two, three, four hours, but it's in, based on the individuals. The individuals confirm if they want a long layover or a short layover. Yeah, I at least need a smoke break. Cause that's a yeah, long, so how many hours of flight is that? That's eight hours. You talk about eight from, to nine hours from, from the U.S. to Amsterdam, and then that's just from Amsterdam. And about it's about the same, about eight hours to get to like Kilimanjaro, or it's like uh, seven hours to get to Ghana from there, or or seven and a half hours to get to. Well, if we're doing um, Senegal, we, we use the Paris route, or we use the direct route from New York. Mm -hmm. So the, the the thing of it is, so that's basically have different like routes sixteen and hours in flight. Uh, yes, if you're gonna look at the the two the two tours mm -hmm. that we do, the main tours, which is uh, to go to Ghana and go to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you're looking at um, eight to nine hours to get to Amsterdam, and then you're looking at uh, for Ghana seven hours, so that's about fifteen hours, and for Tanzania about eight to nine hours again. So oh man, it's uh, it, it gets up there. So uh, now you know Tanzania. You know, I see you rocking the Tanzania. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you one know. of my favorite countries in the world. Yeah, you know, and 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 Tanzania to me is, is paradise. You know. Because um, there's a place in Tanzania that most ones don't know about and they don't tell us about, which is called Zanzibar. Yes, that, yeah, that's and, Zanzibar is a business. And, and, <laughs> and, and Zanzibar is next to the sea, right? Oh, yes, it's its own little island across from uh, the mainland Tanzania. And then you can get to the mainland by shuttle boat or airplane. Mm hmm. Give yeah, thanks. So that's part of our route. That's why I'm, I'm excited when you brought it up. So, so how was the water, though? How was the, you know, I'm, I like to get in water. I wish, so I wish, my, I wish I like, my son was here so he can tell you because uh, oh, we've been to two of the best beaches mm. on Zanzibar Island, which is Kenwar and Nungui. Those beaches are on the northwest side of the island, the furthest part of the island. We're going to put that on the screen for you, too. What's the name of them again? Uh, the, be the, the beaches. Beach, yeah, one is called Nungui, Nungui and then the other one is called Kenwa. Kenwa. And that's on the northwest side. Top furthest part in Tanzania on okay. the mainland, as far as uh, the, the excuse me on Zanzibar Island. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it's uh, right there on the map, and it just gives you the best beaches and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nice getaway, and um, the, the water is nice, uh, per perfect for the swimming, jet skiing, mm -hmm. and also we do this wonderful thing called. A sunset cruise. That's like literally my favorite thing on that. Tell me about the journey. sunset cruise, <laughs> man. Hold on, hold on. Sunset cruising. Brother so Ted. We, so we're on the water. Sunset cruising, and we'll be cruising that. How do we, oh yeah, you have you know you, you know you, 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 you pay for your boat, and then you bring your whole crew on the boat. Mm -hmm. I get you drinks, whatever you got, your snacks, and then mm -hmm. you know we have live drummers on there. Mm -hmm. You have a top deck of the boat, and the boat is literally just going from different islands around uh, Zanzibar. So it's a for, big for boat. Two and a half it's not hours. a boat. A uh, decent sized boat to hold your group of 15 people. See it, see it, and, see it. And things like that. And it does make it a special little getaway in the evening. And then when you beautiful. finish, then you go enjoy you your dinner. You said DJ's on the boat? Well, our DJ will be the drummers. Okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to figure this out because this, this is sounding really real now. Because, I mean, so yeah, how's the party in Africa, you know, the nightlife? Brother, it's fun because, you know what? You're with your brothers and sisters. Like sometimes I'm with my family. My mother's there, my sister there, my brother, and some and very close friends. True. And we just, you know, usually we're just working all the time in America. Mm -hmm. Like literally, like I tell people, people like you guys enjoy us. I was like, yeah, we work. Some of us work seven days a week. Uh, so we just we just go out wherever we go out, whatever social place, restaurant or nightlife place. We just make it a party and we just socialize and we have a good time. We enjoy ourselves. And then we have our local crew mm -hmm. of people that just, you know, make sure that we're good. Local. And that's it. Every country we go to. Man, that's beautiful, man. Uh, so, so when people look up, they see, you know, you so, know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they're like, I'm like, yeah, that's, I was like, that's what we do. That's the tour part of it. The tour part if we enjoy ourselves, but also we do serious business. But let's focus on the tour part. Let's true. enjoy ourselves. Let's enjoy it. Let's Experience. do jet skiing, swimming. Yes, go get you some nice massages. Oh, go get you some nice cocktail. Oh, you know, oh, and then, you know, we have the, you know, we have a whole tour staff. So, mm. you know, the bus is there. The driver's ready in the morning. The tour guide is ready. Mm. You know, breakfast is ready. All you got to do is organize yourself. Enjoy your breakfast. Get on the bus. Then you go to lunch. You know, you know. Then you do dinner, and in between that, you're doing touring and moving around. So, so the schedule is very unique. So uh, how how long is the journey? Uh, depends on what country you're going to. Example: um, Tanzania carries an 11 day itinerary, and that's nine physical days in the country. Mm. So you're looking at four days Arusha, 
three days uh, Zanzibar Island and two days Dar es Salaam. Now Ghana is a site, the same sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a, we're on a, we're on a ten day, we're ten days in the country on a twelve day itinerary. Mm -hmm. So out of the physical days you're there in Ghana, we're doing four days in Accra, three days in Cape Coast Elmina, and three days in Kumasi. Ah, see, and then we're doing Senegal and Gambia. It's like four days in Senegal and then mm. four days in the Gambia. Okay. On a you know, on an eight day itinerary, but that's a on an eight day full time in the country, but also it's a ten day itinerary. So whatever amount of time that we're doing in the country, it's uh, you know you add two days as a travel True. schedule to, to go and also to come back. Now I know that uh, most black people, you know, we don't really travel to the continent like that. You know, it's usually, usually Europeans traveling yeah. back and forth to the continent. So how are my people received in Africa by the Africans in Africa? I Man, your brothers and sisters want to see you come home. I mean, they understand that sometimes it's an economic situation and us have a lacking of understanding of the purpose of why we should make that move, you know? because sometimes you know, people have other things you know, based on the finance or what's going on. But the fact that some of us can make it, because you know, it's one of those historical things, you are stolen from your continent, True. and you know, no one ever thought that we'd even come back. So the fact that even me and you is having this conversation, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. incredible. Yes, and that's why it's a and then people are like, why are you always smiling? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, it's a reasonable smile. True, true. I mean, we had a whole world like this cast us out and forgot about us true true you know? true true it's true yeah. it's true and, and then, the, the land is ready so <laughs> is is it is it enough land for everyone oh uh, yes well, one thing about uh, africa it's enough land for those of us who want to come mm. key thing for those of us who want to come mm. you know now if it was the whole population for the diaspora now that would be a little adjustment that needs to be made mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but nevertheless that's where the abundance of land is, man. Africa, it's 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 all there. So what we have is 15 acres plus 60 acre plus 60 acres for a total of 75 acres. But in that area and other areas, you know, you have more land. Mm -hmm. You just gotta do the wait, research. Wait, hold slow up. So you said 60 acres. What, what's 60 acres now? Now we have two phases of our Black Star Pan African community. And when we do the Ghana tours, we usually take the groups and those are what we have like on YouTube showing mm -hmm. the 15 acres mm -hmm. which we have um, a couple already living on there. Positive. And they're from the United States? Or? Yes, they're from Alabama. They literally never went to Africa, didn't know anything about Africa and I connected with them in literally 2019. Right. And they traveled with us December 2019. Mm -hmm. So that whole year they went from not knowing anything about Africa to travel with me to, to literally moving less than a year later Wow. During the COVID, during the, you know, during the end of the lockdown, and then literally, um, you know, they got the land months ahead of time, got them all the legal paperwork, mm -hmm. got them all set up, connected them with uh, our attorney that does the residency, and mm -hmm. got them all of their paperwork pretty much, brother, and got them a builder. Wow. For, for our, that's, a, that's one of our group builders. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, December 2021, you know, we go there and we visit them. We visited them last May, but wow. like, we literally, like, it's like literally, they went with us for the first time in Africa, December 2019. Wow. And then we came and saw their finished house on the property of Black Star Pan-African Community, December wow. 2021, within two years. And everything wow. that they know and was connected to was based on our resource and what we have connected. So I tell people mm. that it's easy to talk and say things and gossip and everything. It's a whole different story when you're able to this, when people are investing their money in you and they depend on you to come through. And then, then you showed them the path of how they came through. They, they depended mm. on us. That's why most people, when they're traveling with us, they don't have those connections in Africa. So they went from a Bible Belt, <laughs> Alabama, you know, George, these are Bible Belt places. So they went from a Bible Belt place to the original land, and they got their own door keys now. Brother, Within it's amazing. Well, three what, years? Well, no, brother, this is, this is less than two years. They literally, you know what I mean? And I got a key. Was the house built from scratch? The house was built from scratch. They just started building the house last year, like a year ago. So, you know, within all that time, we're getting them all their legal paperwork mm. and everything, and they're there in the land peacefully. And then other people are building peacefully. Mm. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's... Beautiful. We make it seem easy, but it's, it takes a lot of experience. I've worked with so many other groups of people right. who got land, and then they just, like, the thing fell apart. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one group was Fiancra, one group was Garvey Town. But the thing of it is, in their failures, you learn. It's just kind of like in Marcus Garvey. We learned, that we learned about how Marcus Garvey was set up and sabotaged. Mm -hmm. So in this generation, we're educating ourselves how to prevent those things from happening. Mm -hmm. Because we know about one thing that's always going to be there and that's always going to come. 
self-hating Negroes, race traders, black devils. Mm. And this movement is important. Brothers like yourself who was here doing the work, True. you like, you know, you keep in touch with me that you know, because I mean like your connection to the motherland. True and man. I appreciate that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I appreciate it representing my brothers. For real. Because for real. we have to get up every day and dedicate ourselves to us as a people. True. You know? I'm one of them people, I'm always telling people, you marry your black woman, you have black children, mm -hmm. you teach the black youths them how to, 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 to build civilization. True. You man. know, and that's what this community is about. Yes, you know. Uh, our children, you know, mm -hmm. me, you, True. all our children, our brothers and sisters that are watching, they'll be able to work together. They'll be able to run Fortune 500 corporations that are 100% black owned and run. Mm, because, yeah. of, you know, I love Malcolm X always, man, one of the greatest teachers ever. Right. Malcolm X educated us that land is the base of independence. Independence, yes, you know, He's talking about freedom and justice from mm -hmm. land. Okay. You know, and we realize that the biggest issue that we have had in America is that whenever we get the land, we can't really build anything on the land because then that causes an issue because that's black power. Mm -hmm, true, true. But then true. now the chiefs and the people that we're dealing with in whatever African country, mm -hmm. it means so Ghana, they they, they they like they they feel like they want some of that black power, uh, and and you know mm -hmm. and they want to turn over their, the ancestors' land over to people who want to build something for mm -hmm. us as a people because some of them can easily I know people always associate selling out with chiefs and you know based on historical events mm -hmm. which is what it is but you know it's like you can't condemn all chiefs especially all Ghanaian chiefs and things like true, that true, true. you know you have a lot of chiefs there in the country they're looking at me and you because Ghana has been that country privilege of just having a leader like Kwame Nkrumah. And Kwame Nkrumah was privileged being here on the East Coast. True, true. And, you know, learning about well, it's Harlem. Black History Month. It's the, Black History Month. Let's speak on Kwame for a minute. Perfect. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. So Kwame was the president of Ghana. And which years was that now? Uh, that speaking? was um, you know, during the independence of 1957. All right. You know, Good. we always forget to remember that magical years. And I want to say he served a little bit um, close to 10 years or less than uh, 10 years you know, around that uh, time frame mm -hmm. and you know it's one of those things where sometimes you you know you are a visionary and you're futuristic and people mm -hmm. don't get you but Kwame Nkrumah came from a special energy mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like when you're talking about key figures Kwame Nkrumah uh, Malcolm X sure. Garvey you know sure. these are icons, icons on a whole different level oh, because you know? again what you look at these are the ones who are paving the way for us to return to Africa right even when we check even when we check uh, Marcus Garvey Marcus Garvey was focused on Liberia at that time because Liberia was offering land for us to return home in those early stages back then. Liberia was the one country that was allowing blacks to return. This is way before Ghana and all these places was inviting right. us, you know? So, and Ethiopia as well. We got to oh, remember absolutely. Ethiopia. Ethiopia is in the mix. Because His Imperial Majesty gave us land in Shashimani dating back from 1948, the Shashimani Grant. And that's another grant that was given to us for black people to return home in the West to our land to help develop the land of Ethiopia. And these things have been going on since the on, all through the continent after His Majesty sparked that fire. And I'm thankful for that because he was the one who formed the Organization of African Unity. And right. he was the one who actually brought all African states together to unify for the benefit of bigging up the whole Africa, the continent, working together. And these things were going on in the early stages, even Mandela. Enough ones don't even know. Mandela w went to prison for the gun that Haile Selassie gave him. Yeah, you have to look these things up. It's history. Why was Mandela locked up? Because Mandela went to Ethiopia and got training from the Ethiopian uh, army and his majesty and trained him there and sent him back to South Africa to lead his people. And his majesty gave him a gun. And Mandela went back to South Africa with that gun. And they never found the gun because Mandela was smart. He took the gun and he said he wrapped it in a cloth and buried it five kilometers in the earth. So you ain't going to find that. You ain't going to find that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I get, I guarantee they want that gun still. But differently, Mandela went to prison for the same gun that His Majesty gave him for what? To fight for the revolution and the freedom of the people. You see what I'm saying? Because we as a people got to realize, say, we have a land to defend. You know, and we thinking over here, we defending our block. You know, you're on your block, <laughs> defending your block. And you ain't thinking about your mother Africa. You know what I mean? Which you should be defending with all your heart and your might. So 
in those early days, you had certain political leaders at that time in Africa who was on the development for the bigging up for Africans returning home to Africa, as my brethren was speaking on, Kwame Nkrumah. Because Kwame now was in Ghana, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, his whole thing was to bring Africans together in Ghana from that time. So you had ports that we were being introduced to, and then at that time, you got to go back, because we got to go black. It's a black history month. I need to know this history. So going black in that time, black people like Malcolm X, even King. Enough ones don't even know King went to the continent, too. Yeah, King was in Ghana for that independence. We got to know these things. Yeah, yeah. Coretta Scott and King went to Africa, too. You yeah, understand? Just like, just like uh, Dr. King was a warrior. You know? Sometimes he don't get his respect and, and, profit, uh, no, no. and, uh, and props and respect as, you know, as a warrior. But, yeah, mm -hmm. these are all of our warriors, man. And, and they educated. Made... They don't give King his props to being educated, too. The man was 15 when he went to Morehouse College. You understand? So he wasn't an idiot. Yeah, he true. wasn't walking around with his pants sagging off his brother, behind, yeah, talking about, brilliant. what's up, shawty, and what up, bro? <laughs> All right? The man had education. The South was educated. We forget these That's things. Serious. You know what I mean? We were educated, and we owned our own land, and we had our own businesses. That's where we came from. So we were strong in the industry field because all industries we were building and doing. You understand? They don't want us to know this true history about we literally built these things that make America run now to this day. Seriously. You understand? The cell phone was created by a black man. The same phone you on now was created by a black man by the name of Henry Sampson. You know what I'm saying? Henry Sampson, right? Then they come up with a the phone. They call it the Samsung. <laughs> That's the stuff, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> they give you the Samsung, and you ain't realize that the Samson, the man that built the phone, the first man who created it. So all these things that we have done in that time, we were very skilled and educated black men and women. We were no idiots. You understand? We knew the, the earth from back and forth. We knew maps. See, right now, y'all don't know how to get from east to west without the GPS. Right? right. So I call it the GP stress. <laughs> but differently, though, our people were looking to unify with Africa. And that's one of the main reasons why they had to assassinate. Because remember, this, this day coming up, you're you always celebrating the birthday, but you got to celebrate the assassination. Because our people have been assassinated, too. Right? But when... Malcolm X was assassinated, it was strictly because he had formed the OAAU in America at that time, which was the Organization of African American Unity, off of his Imperial Majesty's branch of the OAU, which was formed in Ethiopia. So it was a time for us to unite and come together. And that's the one thing that this European does not want to see us do as African descended people, is unify. Because once we, as the Africans here in the West, unify with the Africans in the East again and start our trading and start our development and building, take our education, take our knowledge over to Africa and help build up Africa even more, it'll be the great continent which it always was in the beginning and it shall be in the end. But they don't want us to do that. Because if we do that, why? We'll be totally independent. Mm. Yes, sir. So speak on the independence of owning some land, Bumar. Yeah, absolutely, family. So that is the vision. I mean, mm. you know, people always ask me what was the end goal. And, you know, I'm telling people that we can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel now. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like you're thinking about going to Africa and you're like, all of these things that's taking place. And you're thinking about repatriation, living and doing business. You know, so the independence is going to come from when you build on the land. Mm -hmm. You know, you clear the land, you build the structures, your business center, your community center, you build your homes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on the you know, first 15 acres. The next set of land, 60 acres, you split that in half. You use half of that for commercial development. You're putting up your medical building. You're putting up your, you know, your education mm. building. You're putting up all aspects of things that you need. You know, I'm, I'm, I come from a maintenance background. You know what I mean, you maintain and you fix True. Uh, things from whether it's computers, airplanes, machines, and so on. Mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, so you have those things in place and you have it to where you know you have a young generation from you know your physical children to the ones in the town they're getting a chance to learn and operate you know an organized community mm -hmm. you know and it, it's remind me of like a, a military base you know people always look at, at like a military base like uh, you know it's like a small you know unit or a small little city or a small civilization mm -hmm. you know it has all the aspects of life in it 
Yeah, wow. things like that. Or even so, you know, when I was on a naval ship, uh, aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what that also represents. So our town, our community, the land that we get, you're building it to where it's self-sufficient. You're going to be clearing 10 acres of land. You're going to mm -hmm. be growing every single thing that you ever wanted to grow. Even on the, your 15-acre community and around your community. You know, I think about Jamaica, where I grew up at. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and Every time you turn around where we live at in the backyard, you know, you have your mango trees, you have your, your guava tree, true, your true, apple tree, your true, orange true. tree, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. all of them, you know, niceness there and yes, things sir. like that. And then, you know, you have your, your garden on the side or the front and then, you know, mm. you, know you grow your kalaloo and things mm. like that. You even have your aki tree, I mean, you know, you go climb up and go pick your aki and things like that. You, you just get into that life, man. That, that was one of my fond memories. I was growing up in Jamaica and that, that life. Right, true. You know, like you so pick off a tree, you can pick a fruit from a tree. You know, and then you come to America, you come to the, the, the concrete jungle. Right. And then, you know, I used to tell people all the time, I was like, what's wrong with this place, man? The man, them don't have no fruits on the trees. Well, we got plenty of trees, but no fruit on them. <laughs> yeah, so that was the thing that's always tripping me about, about that. So once I started going to Africa, you know, I was like, Big man. trees, too. They got red, I was like, red I was oak like, trees. I'm back home. Redwood you know? trees, big old trees, but no fruit on it. So we would walk up on a tree and just hug a tree, but no fruit on it. The thing was to climb up a tree and pick a fruit from a tree, or maybe even hang out in a tree. Because most people don't realize, in this day and time, we don't plant fruit trees like we did. You know, right. That's why we're not seeing fruit trees. Yeah, they got... plant on like a plantation or somewhere like that. To right. Work. So it's like we don't develop the land. A man will buy, some, buy a land. We even buy the land. He'll buy a house. He'll buy a house and spend $500,000 just for the bricks. Live there and never plant one fruit tree in his yard. Oh, serious. People do that. You know? <laughs> he'd plant a few bushes, you know, to sit around the place and be bushed up and cut up. But he wouldn't actually plant a tree so his generations could actually eat off the land. And some of them, if you have trees there, they'll cut them down. Yes. Like cut in the case down. of where in, in Ghana, like the, you know, in, like our crowd, you know, the, 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 the concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. Like literally, you know, and then the issue is when you cut things down, like on our land, we did have to cut some trees down and mm -hmm. we kept the good ones, but at the same time too, if you're going to do that, you got to go back and replant. True, the right, it, true, the right. You know, it's serious. It's the most important thing that we can do when we have land, family plant. And then since we saw my, if you're going to plant, might as well plant some herbs, mm -hmm. some fruits, some vegetables, things that you can eat, you can use yes, and things like that. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that, you no, know, because I don't think we really have any useful plants in the world. I think... Everything is useful. We just have to find the right use for it. Truth and right. But the things that we definitely know are the use and things like that, that, that that's a no-brainer right there. So those are the culture of things that we push in, in our Black Star community. And to also do cooperative economic investment. So if you have a community of 50 people and you're putting your money together, you can, just, you can, you can basically just run your own credit union. True. And then True. you can also recycle your investments and you invest it in stocks, bonds, treasury bills. And also another part of the, the town itself is the beach. So we lock down some land on the beach. We bring in investors to build, mm -hmm. build resorts. Um, the places to where you can do your, your, you know, like I talked about Zanzibar mm -hmm. Island. And, you know, you have your jet ski. You have your entertainment. You have your restaurants. You have your, your social energy in life. Right. And you make that more of a tourist destination because people are stressing from the, the, the big cities. You know, in Ghana, you got big cities. They have Kumasi, Accra, which is nice. But sometimes you just want to lay back out and kick back on the beach like mm -hmm. you're somewhere in like Ocherias, Negril, or Montego Bay, Jamaica. Right, exactly. So, you know, no Ghana don't really have that vibes and that energy. So mm -hmm. we're going to bring that vibes and energy true, true, true. of what we have learned and what we know. The only difference is the mistake that we made in Jamaica is foreigners and rich foreigners. I'm talking about rich groups of people from different parts of Europe and different parts of America literally locked down all of the best beaches and the best wow. locations in Jamaica. Mm. And they run those investments of, as big corp corporate operations. So That's most true. of us didn't get a chance to get into that. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no black people that own any resorts or have any shares and things like that. I'm not saying that, but the level of ownership is so weak. Right. You're talking about a black country. Truth and right. You know, so... The mistakes that we um, that was made in the Caribbean islands, we're telling people, mm -hmm. telling brothers and sisters in Africa, mm -hmm. it was easy for those things to happen to us because we're a small entity. Some islands, fifty thousand people, one two million, right. you know, and things that's like true. that. You know, uh, uh, you know, a whole military convoy can take over that island. Right, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> So, so, you know, so you're on a big African continent. So mm -hmm. that's why we're bringing our energy to strengthen the continent. And then the more for us on the diaspora, that's why I've been trying to influence 
so many people and then we have a, a few a few of them on YouTube you know that have traveled me I've connected a network and I'm always mm -hmm. telling them I was like family the money in the business is out here start that business mm -hmm. you know Ghana is my stronghold and I love Ghana just like you know uh, other countries I have Tanzania Senegal and Gambia but those are what those are four countries truth and rise yeah. out of a continent of 50 something countries 50 yeah 52. so and I'm not saying that everybody have to do tourism because you're limited when you base things on tourism in some countries mm -hmm. some countries you have opportunities for manufacturing and straight up this industrial development. Truth and right, truth and right. You know, when we're talking about all of the things that you and I are wearing and things like that, and all the things that we have, it's just most of those things that's come from somewhere in, in you know, in, in Southeast Asia. True. Whether it's uh, India, China, Japan, Korea, right. and so on. So we can become that manufacturing industrial development energy mm -hmm. based on putting our money together and reinvesting it consistently. That's right. So people ask me how I ever got here, and I told them, well, First, I flipped my um, the money I made from the, uh, in the Navy to build me and start me a fresh uh, civilian career doing aircraft maintenance uh, in the civilian world, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. And I flipped that money, uh, working aircraft maintenance, uh, to start my IT business. And I flipped that money to Africa for the Africans. And I flipped that into, you know, you know what we have, Black Star Pan-African community. But I realized I needed some more money. So I reached out to my brothers and sisters and said, hey, uh, we have all of this plot here. You put some money down on here. You, you can get this plot. You can get this plot. And mm -hmm. then you can build. And then we can just look out for each other. Truth uh, and Because now you can't really continue to do a bunch of independent individual business. You know, you have to, you know, you have to think. Because you're thinking about your brothers and sisters. Collectively. And then we have to find a way how. I mean, look at our population. We have to find a way where some of us can come together and work together. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been able to pull up, brother, ingeniously mm. with the Black Star Pan-African community. Boy, from working with the chief, the corporate lawyer, lawyer or I should say corporate attorney, the defense attorney, to the surveyor, to the mm. consultant. You know, these are all black men and you have to connect with them together and provide leadership and organization. Um, you know, because mm -hmm. you're coming with the major aspects of things. You know, we all come with major aspects of things. They're coming with... The, the land, um, the legality of situation, we're bringing the people, the finance, and things like that. Right. But together, you know, it's, what is it going to benefit? Right. It's going to benefit all of our children. Mm -hmm. Truth and right. And, and that's what I'm saying to people. Don't sabotage and hijack something that someone else is building for their family and their children. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're not hurting me. You're hurting our generations. True. Because I realize that's how you know people ask me, if, if you love the Navy and you love the airlines so much, why you know why did you leave? I was like, well, you know, and you're in the military and you're running a, a ship or a, a base. You know, they have a, a, a person that's a commanding officer. You know, mm -hmm. and you know when you you know when you become a grown man, you want to run your own command. Just like true. this whole operation right here is your command. It's, it's, it's true. It's true. It's <laughs> you know, true. For you know what I'm saying? You don't want, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. I, I'm gonna tell people all the time. There's nothing wrong with working for anyone. All of us have to start that place. Yeah. Well, you know my I mean? thing is, you gotta work for the people, but don't work for the people. You know, because exactly. End of the day is, <laughs> while you're working with these for these people, make sure you make building your network. Exactly. Make sure you're building your network. You know, make sure you have your card or something you can pass out to a one about what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Not where you're working at, but what you're actually doing for yourself. Because this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be building our own independent collective strength. You know what I mean? For ourselves and our own family. Not constantly working for Johnson & Johnson and all these other people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're looking at it like this. How are the prices of the land? All right, perfect. So uh, what you have, which is basically 80 foot by 100 foot, which is 8,000 square foot, which is... Close, it's not a quarter of an acre, but close to a quarter of an acre. Uh, you get that for 3500 That's the land cost of 3000 plus administrative cost. And administrative cost money is uh, what we used to do all of the work that needs to be done, including money is going to the attorney, going to our consultant, and people who are just helping us do certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means you're not operating from a broke standpoint. You're operating from a standpoint where you have an organization. You have the money you need to do the certain work and get the job done. So that's 3500 The next thing is a survey. The survey is $350. Once you get your survey back, uh, the deed is no cost. Uh, um, our attorney, our attorney uh, type of the deed, then um, all main parties sign myself as the organizer and the person who have signed for the, the land as the uh, organizer, and then the chief, and then the person who land it is. So mm -hmm. those are the three legal signatures on the back. Sure. And what holds this up is the 99-year lease that we all signed our board member and the chief board member and these are court signed and stamped documents so these are all legal and real documents 99 year lease and it's renewable it's uh it's a terminology of 
where it's a little bit more open in Africa because everything that we do in this country is based on, you know, those kind of lease principles. It's just a lot of times it's in the small section when we're reading our lease. But sometimes those of us who have leases right now for homes, they oh, think man. they own no, it. No, right now people got a lease at the apartment. They got a home. They got an apartment. <laughs> and the lease, the lease is up in 12 months. And if they don't get out of it in the 12 months, that lease goes up. That lease goes up. That lease keeps Another going Another $150 <laughs> per time you sign that lease. That's so it. by the time you be there about five to six years, you're about almost paying double what you spent to be there. Yes, exactly. And that's why we tell people to get a piece of the land, um, you know, get your plot of land and Work it to where you know you're paying for it. You get that out the way, and then next you know you start building your building. So you're using some of your resources to build on the land. Because I'm telling people that you have to, everybody have to think about retirement, and think about the fact that are we really gonna like play this game where we stay in America and where everyone else that comes into the country mm -hmm. get all of your you know all of your benefits and opportunities. Mm -hmm. We turn around and we see the Mexicans, we see the Indians, we see you know what I mean we see this many other uh, groups, True. especially like from Asia. They come, they have access and opportunities, mm -hmm. loans, this and that. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes uh, the system does that just to just you know piss us off and right, just to, you know right, right. and just to Keep say you know what I mean loop. you know you know. You, you know, and also ultimately, what I always see that is, is you know, we're, we're a system that see us as black people as strong, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. where if we connect together properly, we can accomplish a whole lot of things. True. So the level of dividing and conquering and this putting us at a disadvantage, if, if that's not done the way they do it, mm -hmm. you know, they'll lose this game quick. Okay, so it, we're gonna put up on the screen uh, the plot of land that you're right? developing over in Ghana right now, right? Explain to us about this plot of land and what you, you're doing collectively with ones, because I'm seeing it, and it's beautiful, you know what I mean? Yeah, individuals are building their individual homes, mm -hmm. but the main thing is the business and the community center is in the front, mm -hmm. and that's going to service uh, the business centers for, for where all of us have access to work and run business operation, and the main companies that are moving there is my Bomani Technology and Business uh, uh, Service, or, uh, or I should say um, Enterprise, and that's right there. I mean, you're talking about from computer training skills to uh, technical support to this, us having our own call center. Um, so instead of me just making the money indiv individually, we're providing training, and then other people literally can build their careers from it. Because just like you see, whenever you pick up the phone and you call AT&T, you call any of these companies, True. who you know, you, you call in India, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> right, for real, for real, definitely. So in, in certain cases, uh, we're there to negotiate contracts, with, especially with different um, black-owned business. You know, that's mm -hmm. always going to be our niche to mm -hmm. go after, go at them, and say, "Hey, we have people who can speak English, young uh, technicians. They can handle certain things. Your web design, design needs, this needs for this level of business, uh, and and so on, and things like that. And you're literally training a young working business class mindset. So that's one of the main thing about the, about that whole." business center mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know also we're running all of the Africa tours and also other investments as we build up our team of people who do sustainable living and do security and things like that mm -hmm. then you sell those services to other groups of people coming in mm -hmm. and then you're offering consultation and things like that and the community uh, center is very social you know you have people in the town the community mm -hmm. you know you have, you have a swimming pool you have certain social programs Positive. you have training and you know you know you just incorporate certain you know certain food program and things mm -hmm. like that and just you know, be a source for where, you know, you, you know, you're not just being there and enjoying life, but you're doing something. You know, you and I, you and I always talk about it. it's all about the youth. True, true. It's true. all about you know, because mm -hmm. you and I are up there in ages. We, right, you know, we have enjoyed our life from. Yes, you know? It's true. It's true. It's true. But and, we want to you know, make sure that the youth can enjoy this too. You know. Yeah, and we have to give back. So mm -hmm. whenever I meet black men or talk to black men, I always ask them this. And I've even asked this one guy in an interview, I was like, you know, what are you doing for black people? What are we doing for the generation in the future? Mm -hmm. And his issue was he was confused because he was married to a white woman. Mm -hmm. So he, 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 re he realized that it's not his job to do anything for black people. That's what he said mm -hmm. to me. Wow. But also it's not his job to respect a black man like me who is, you know, you have, you know, you have a black woman, you have a black child. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do is black. Mm -hmm. It intimidates some of them. And I'm telling people, yo, I'm not here to intimidate nobody. You, you do what's best for you. If that's your business, you want to marry an Asian woman or a white woman, that's your business. I'm not here trying to save a whole population. I'm trying to get the best 1% of black people so we can build a foundation and leave a legacy for our children. True. My children, your children, all of our black children. Mm -hmm. To where now... 
they don't have to spend all that money going to Ivy League a school in America to get an education to where they get out there in the market and they got their suit, they tie, they got their portfolio. That's right. But then, then look at who your competition is. Right. You know, the right. children who, who, who basically, you know, are the sons and daughters of the owner of the company. That's true. That's <laughs> so true. So are you going to give someone else a job over your children? <laughs> no, I, I want my children to be educated because yeah. here's the thing. What people don't realize is that, especially us, not to see people, just let's go to us. Because right. us, we, we, we got a lot of, uh, you know, doubts and misunderstanding about ourselves as a people. But the African that's in Africa are very intelligent people. I mean, it's, it takes intelligence to speak more than one language. Serious. You know, first off, it takes intelligence to speak more than one language. You know, and most Africans speak at least five to seven different languages. Well, we stuck on Ebonics and all this stupidness out here. You know what I mean? Thinking we speaking over them because they don't know the new slang. All right. But this man and woman speaks five or seven different languages. They can go into a whole next African tongue that you can't even form your tongue to do. Right? So we got to learn from our people again. We got to learn to share our knowledge and build together and put away our little petty differences because we got more in common than we got differences. Serious business. And when I look at it, Speaking of the land, because, you know, like Malcolm said, the land is the basics of independence, right? So with the land itself, 99-year lease, you, you purchase anything that lasts 99 years, <laughs> you can't live 99 years to see the 99-year lease. But my point is saying is that let's take a 10-year span. All right. Let's go 10 years. Let's go 2022 to 2032, right? Now, in those 10 years, in America, after 10 years, you're still going to have more debt. You're still going to have a car note, a house note, right? Still going to be in debt for those 10 years after 10 years pass. But in Africa, if I own the land for 99 years, could you imagine the amount of things you can develop in that time period of owning that land? Possessing that land and don't have to worry about nobody coming and take something away from you, snatch something away. How many people ever pay for all this money for a car and the repo man come and snatch it, right? <laughs> repo, repo, repo out man. there, right? He come and snatch that thing up. You understand? You spent your hard earned money on that and you ain't even you got to really enjoy it, right? But in Africa, you're saying, I got land now. Right. So after three years, I can go, I can build my house. Another year, I can go and develop my business. You know, and by those 10 years, I have everything established and I can actually live. I could even plant a tree within those 10 years and I can eat a fruit off my land in 10 years. So the development is in Africa. It's not in America. We got this thing twisted. We're supposed to be doing business in the West, but living in the East. Because if you check it, the Europeans doing it. The Europeans is living in Africa really sweet. Oh, yeah, that life is good for them. They are buying the best Warren Buffett and all these guys. As you looking up to and watching their numbers, these people own land in your land. The best of land, too. Paradises. So my point is saying that we need to focus, again, lining ourselves up with the continent. Because right. sometimes in America, you know, I feel like the last stolen African left. <laughs> for real, for real. I know I was stolen, you know what I'm saying. Right. You know, I wasn't just here. I was captured. You know, I wasn't a slave, but I was captured. You understand? From my land and bought here. So I know myself that I have to return to my motherland, which is Africa. My four parents didn't come on that ship over here for me to get comfortable over here and be happy to go to a stupor boat. <laughs> you understand? And, and, and watch some, some guy and girl stand on stage. You know what I'm saying? Amongst a white man's field. You understand? When we can be in our own land, running our own things. You see what I'm saying? Even when the time when, when Muhammad Ali had wanted to fight that fight and he fought that fight with, uh, what's his name, the big boy, the bear. What's his name, uh, the boxer dude, um, Foreman, George Foreman. When George Foreman and Muhammad Ali fought, they fought in Africa, right? Remember that fight? Uh, yes, absolutely. And it was a black man who organized that fight too. He didn't get a fight over here in America. They were yeah, fighting him down. the whole sequence. They but even he, showed it in the Ali movie. Yeah. yeah, he took the fight to Africa. 
He overstayed and banked. The rumble in the jungle. Yeah, the rumble <laughs> in the jungle. He banked in Africa because you see, our mind state was different. We were closer connected to the African. You understand? And these days and time, they got us separated so far apart, we think we're different people. We don't realize the things we have in common. So them men and women back then was unifying. Bob Marley went over there as well. Went to Zimbabwe. Yeah, Zimbabwe. Sang the independence. Yeah. Independence tune. Zimbabwe. Yes. Right? He said, Africans will liberate Zimbabwe. You understand? We'll fight. We're going to fight. We are going to fight for our rights. Right? And this is what we had to do. Those songs are still liberating the people to this day. You understand? Because word sound is power. No matter if it's then or now, the truth is still the truth. And Bob spoke the truth. He spoke to the inner soul of man. So, because it was the truth. And man need to realize that there's a voice inside you that's saying some things. A lot of y'all ignore the voice inside you. But that voice inside you is the voice of truth and rights. And when someone defends it and speaks on it, it resonates within your inner soul. And that's what Bob and a lot of the prophets did, like Peter Tosh. Peter Tosh said, uh, no matter where you come from, as long as you're a black man, you're an African. Some of y'all need to pull that tune up too, because he mentioned more places, he even mentioned places in the United States. He said you could have come from New York, you could have come from Philly, you understand? You could have come from the West Indies, but as long as you're a black man, you're an African. You see, the words that resonate with your soul, See, a lot of y'all listening to these people telling you so much things and it's not really resonating with your soul. Mama Africa resonates with your soul because that melanated being is who you are. That's where you get your melanation from, is Africa. So we have to acknowledge ourselves as that first and work more towards the land. That's why we're having this conversation because we had to get you more focused on how you can invest in the land. Serious. Live in the land and work with your people in the land. And my brother here is a prime example because he's doing it. Absolutely, family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, and that's what's got, needed. We got people living on land in Africa that we organize from, you know, from right here in America. And, and, the, and the beautiful thing is I know some of the people, this was my personal people who went with him and traveled, you yes, know what I'm absolutely. saying, and yeah, changed their life as well. With us. So it's like he's changing the lives of people because you got to change the way you, your outlook is the way you see things, you know what I'm saying? They got us seeing things like we ready to rush off and go to a trip to Italy. You understand in Rome and Paris that. to go see the Paris and all this <laughs> stuff here when you really should be focused on going to see Kilimanjaro. Yes, yes. Going to Zanzibar, Zanzibar. going to the best sea in the earth, going to places go. like uh, uh, Kenya. You understand what well, those people are? Kenya's a big city too. Kenya's a beautiful city. You know yes. what I mean? South Africa even is a beautiful city. So we got a lot of things going on in the continent that we don't even know because they got us thinking that is Ula Bula. And all this little madness. You understand? We ain't looking at Africa on the heights that it is. So we have to elevate our mind and start looking at these things. It's a beautiful thing with the internet now. Yeah, absolutely. Because family. with the internet now, you can pull up things for yourself. No one ain't got to tell you nothing. No, you're going to believe nothing. You can see it for yourself. Check out these places. Check out the beauty that Africa has to offer because it's a beautiful paradise. And that's what we've been taken from. We've been taken from paradise. You understand? We're comfortable in hell. You see my shirt, right? Harriet Tubman, what Harriet tell you? She said, <laughs> I freed hundreds of, of Africans, stolen Africans, basically. And she would have freed millions more, hundreds, thousands more, only if they knew they were slaves. There you go, people, that, that stuff stuck in their head. So comfortable being a slave. Comfortable being a slave, yeah. You understand, comfortable in captivity. We have to free ourselves first within the mind. And then we free our body. But we have to free our mind. And this is what I'm talking about. You had the brother that I was speaking on, Don King. Don King spent 10 years in prison, right? Came out of prison, started his own company, managing company, and wind up making the biggest fight in history for black people. You understand? In the prison system, traveling to Africa, making that happen. Why? Because he liberated his mind first. Mm. The body was trapped in the cell, but the mind was always free. You understand? And that's what we got to do again. We got to free our mind and stop getting caught up into these little materialistic things and focus on what's real. Fruit trees are real. Fruits are real. You got to be able to eat from the earth again. Serious, you man. understand? Pick a fruit. That's why land is important, you know? Touch you don't got no hand. land, you can't plant nothing. You can't own nothing. I mean, 
Because what what do you really own in America? Only thing I can think of what people have is people have depreciated cars, homes, and they have a bunch of junk in their Repo home. man outside. <laughs> Repo man outside. Miss a no. <laughs> yeah. Repo man outside. Because I mean, <laughs> right now, the eviction man waiting. Right? Repo man waiting. We talking about 99 years. I'm on my land 99 but years. But the thing of it is, when you, when you think of it is, we're all in that town together. Mm, mm, mm. By the time, you know, you're talking about like, that's about four or five generations. Yes. You know, it's easy. You know, so you're setting it up for your generations to figure it out to where wow. they don't consider themselves as all these things we call ourselves. You know, you literally just, and, you know, an wow. African, a part of the African nation. And, you know, because you, in order for you to progress, you're going to have to cut some of these things out. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so so we're setting things in place as best as we can. Wow. So when people give us any issue about 99 years, I'm like, what about the house that you own in America that you think you're owning things? Why don't you read the, the full length of the paperwork? Because, you know, people, that's another issue I have with people. Yeah. You know, I'm up here telling you about 99 year lease and, and explain all these things. But a lot of times you're doing real estate here. People are not telling you all those things. They're expecting you to read it, mm -hmm. and then when you don't read it, you don't know anything. But but so you think you just you know you know I'm you sure. got a house and the, the deal was great. By the time you turn around, you don't pay for that house about three times. Oh no, you, you never finished paying for that house. Yeah, because you got to pay property tax and oh, you wind up taking you, out a debt you, for that house. You miss you a payment of that property that tax and you see what happened. Like you talk about a repo man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> they come and get you. They come repo that house. Oh, that they got they got to do call the foreclosure people. <laughs> Foreclosing. Repo and foreclosure. Yeah, they be foreclosing. All terminologies that we're just going to take your stuff and we have an authorization and a legal right to and do it. And we're comfortable so. with it. We're because comfortable with it. Because this is our law and if you don't follow it, it's what it is. Mm. So I'm telling people that's, that's what you're dealing with. Or you can set up your own paradise and system in Africa to where you negotiate with the chief town mm -hmm. and you make your contributions. You live happily ever after and you set it to where we can build a one African nation True. over a period of time mm -hmm. to where we, you know, you're rivaling you know, the great nations, mm -hmm. to where now you're, not, you're not playing small ball anymore. Not, now you actually have a real, real Navy, a real Air Force, wow. a real, real military to protect mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a real continent that's True. a continent yeah. now because countries have come together and say we are one continental body. And the diaspora is our connection. True. You know, and these True. are the things that we all have to work, work on because people think that people in government, oh, I voted for this person, he's the president, now he's going to fix all my problems. He's going to bring the roads in and do this. Right. I'm telling folks, I was like, hey, you want things done, you put your money together and you invest. The mm -hmm. government is there for a certain reason, which is, is, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to your government will respect you if you empower yourself and get some of this stuff done. Developing. We got to come to develop the land. We can't go there and sit around. We can't come thinking we're going to leave this country and go sit around in Africa. We have to go there and develop the country to a more greater and greater level. Now, here's the thing. I have a, a good friend of mine who's from Ghana, right? right? Born in Ghana. And he told me a story that, that stuck to me, you know? He said, during the time of Ghana's, you know, beginnings, there, it never been colonial. Like basically, is it, it's been fights going on. But it's been again with the army. It haven't never been with the people where the people was affected, where they had to move out and ship out. I talk about like, oh yeah, like military takeover. Right. Because they never had any kind of like, like literally like civil war. Right. You know. Mm. You know what you had was um, we what do you call a military dictatorship. Military so, you know, dictatorship. Military um, leaders take over, and right. then it's just the same thing the next day. Is just only difference is this is being run by a military operation right. versus uh, you know the president. And that's the worst that has happened in Ghana. And since I've been to Ghana, the country has been very stable mm -hmm. and organized to where you don't see civil unrest. You know, same mm -hmm. thing as countries like Tanzania, mm -hmm. uh, well organized. And, you know, and what we can do is just be a part of the future there. True. By basically going there, building the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, with the government, the people, and making your contributions. Because right. that's one thing that we have to show when we're making our move to Africa, showing what we are bringing from the diaspora. Right. Because we have to always remember that, the, you know, Nations like India, China, Lebanon, they're there, mm -hmm. and they're basically doing a lot of things that we could be doing. We could be doing. We're you supposed know? to be doing. So it, it doesn't become right. a free lunch or easy easy operation for us anymore right. because now they have people that are set to replace us. It's, it's no different from when you turn around and you think about the Mexicans. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about 
even 20 years ago in Georgia, because I was here 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and then you look at the construction site, you look at the landscaping sites, you saw brothers out there working. Yeah, back then. G good luck. I'm yeah. trying to find mm -hmm. one brother. If you find a brother on a construction site, he got that sign that says slow and stop. No, I seen some Mexicans on top of the roof of uh, the Spellman building here. It was a Spellman uh, roof they were preparing. See, they couldn't find the brothers to do the roof of Spellman, a black, you know. It was all Mexicans up there, high up on the roof. Here's the thing is, and I'm right not knocking, now, right you know, now, the Mexicans it's just, it's, it's not it, that. No, I'm not. I'm not the Mexicans the are my family. people. That's my brother. He's the we're, brown. We brown we're and we black and people. brown people. But my point is saying that we forgot the, the fullness of you working with our hands. You understand? Right now, we comfortable on these computers, you know what I'm saying, and screens, but we supposed to be working with our hands, able to touch things again. Feels. And this is the thing we come from. We, we got comfortable now being house Negroes, you understand? And we forgot the use and the benefits of being a field Negro. The field Negro had skills, you understand? Absolutely. The field Negro was strong and fast and powerful. You yes, understand? Yes, we he's forgot. a warrior. Yeah, he was a warrior. And we forgot these things because we comfortable watching people like uh, Obama Nation, you know what I'm saying, in the white in the white boy's house. And it's a white man's house, right? Right, that's, that's why it's called the White House. It's called the White House, right? <laughs> yeah, so now we comfortable watching what's going on in the white man's house. Yeah, right. And it's, then we comfortable <laughs> in the white man's land in a master bedroom. In the master bedroom, that's, a fun, that's the part that's funny. Yeah, so we're in a master bedroom <laughs> watching the White House, and we comfortable waiting on a white Christmas, right? <laughs> so we forgot that we black. Yeah, we forgot the blackness that, that who stuff. we are. Yeah. We don't white it out so much. <laughs> you understand that we forgot that we black. So my point is saying, in those times, we knew who we were and we knew our identity of ourselves and loved ourselves and loved our country. We forgetting the love of our land now because we comfortable in this white man land. So the brother told me, he said, my brother from Ghana, he told me, he said, the land that he's on is his family's land. Absolutely. He said... That land has been his family's land forever. So even when he passed, his family's still going to own the land. Generational ownership. They're not going to be moved off and getting evicted. They ain't got to worry about no slip coming through the door. You know what I'm saying? They ain't worried worry about the marshal coming through. Right? Because marshals come through, you know. They don't stop marshals from coming through for about a year. They got what? They got more comfortable. It depends on who they got to evict. They got more comfortable. Black people in America got more because the marshal ain't coming through. I can sit up in here. All right. Well, I ain't got to pay no bills. You get comfortable. But that's not how America's run. America's a commerce country. They want your dollar bill every month, every first of the month, as a matter of fact. And as black people, we don't get a check unless we making a check. You understand? Right. We ain't getting a check just coming through the mail and we sitting back waiting for it, you know what I mean? So we got to go out there and make the check as a black man. So my point is saying now, we constantly making money just to live. Just to live. That's what we doing. This man owns the land, his family owns the land, and the land gonna be there, and the houses are built on the land from such time, right? So it's always there. Yes. That, that, that part is never a problem, where you gonna live. You understand? You haven't even seen a homeless African here in America, have you? Where the Africans homeless at? Where the homeless Africans in America? <laughs> I ain't seen no tent with the Africans in it. No, I haven't seen any either. Okay? Because those Africans, again, are educated people. They're in, they're in hospitals. They're in schools. They're in the music field. They're in all type of fields. That's what they're doing Serious. with their time. And then they're taking that same money and they're shipping it back home to help their people. You understand? And then we look at it like, oh, well, they just did for their own. No, that's what we should be supposed to be focusing on. Because once we buy land in the continent, we can still build for our generations there. We can't do that in the Western Hemisphere. It's not sure. designed that way. You know, understand? So we have to have something for ourselves. And the only place we're really going to be able to have, even, even to live. Imagine that. How are you going to live in America after you retire? You see what the prices are now? Yeah, serious. You know, they have the, those big high-rises, right? Anybody but, talking about the prices? How much it costs to, to, to uh, rent a place right now? Absolutely, and that's why I'm saying that's why people use those senior packages. But is that the way you really want to live? Nah. I'm saying yeah. it's it's it, it's at least between fifteen hundred fifteen to, $2, to twenty two hundred per month to live in America right now, okay. right? Ridiculous, because minimum wage is still the same. Minimum wage is still the yeah, same. Yeah, since everything the, has gone up except for pay. Minimum wage is still the same. The gas went up, right? Yeah. Food's gone up. Yeah, all that stuff has gone up a whole lot. I went lot. to the store the other day and bought something, and it was usually $1.99. Going to the store, it was 
Yeah, as, and what you have to look at is the total bill of what you used to spend two years ago, and you realize that where you used to spend about fifty dollars, now you're spending a hundred dollars. But the money ain't going up. We're not getting. Yeah, we're not pay. getting. Yeah, exactly. Is anybody doing it? They wait. They on the like stimulus you ask check. People who were getting paychecks, and you ask them when the last time they get a pay raise, and they're talking about like a few years. Right. And then some people, they, their money was cut back. You know, because of this whole COVID drama and things. Oh, they so, lost that. So people are Cut making... Back, you know, that's done. Their earnings are less. That's done. And then so, they've been having to spend more. So America's, by the time you turn around, it's not going to work. So you tell people, use some of your earnings and invest in Africa. Right. Invest in land. Build your home. Invest in your business. Build mm -hmm. partnership. Mm -hmm. And things like that. Like I have an account in, um, in Ghana. It's a treasury bill account. I opened it back in 2009. Mm -hmm. Man, I just love looking at that account, man. And just, it, it, it's in CDs, so the money is a lot more. The money is not as much as it looks. Right, 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 uh, right. I know what you, you mean. You could be it's... looking in there and it, it, could, make, it could say 20,000 CDs, but uh, mm -hmm. you also have to divide up times 600. True, true, true. I see. <laughs> but, uh, I see. you know, it's, it's, all, it's, it's one aspect of just investing. You know, you put mm -hmm. some money away. And then cycle the investment to where now you can use the profits and then you keep that investment going. Mm -hmm. This ain't you know, a Bitcoin. Yeah. And this no, is not, no, yeah, this is not, not a bit of a this, coin. Yeah, this is, this is straight up treasury build investment, stocks, bonds. So you put that your you coins in, into it. Even and it's a black it's owned country, a black owned investment that, you know, when you invest in treasury bill, like in a black owned country, it's go, that money is going towards the development of the country. Sure. That's how loans and things are given out. Mm -hmm. It's a very unique thing. So. Uh, you know, these are the things that we get people in. If you, when they're traveling with us, we, we, we're teaching them the game. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. one thing about me. Anybody even want to do tourism and things, you know, I'm teaching them the game. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're giving it to them for free to where True. all the stuff you're doing is just literally just on YouTube, just open, available. Mm -hmm. And it's been on there for a long time. And then you, people connect with you. So you tell people, family, the reason for people like myself doing that is so we can connect together and do, sure. business, do business. Connect together and take things to another level because if we don't I'm telling people family the, the, the dominant forces of the world the Chinese you know, the Indians and you know, the groups like the Lebanese they are not playing they see no, a great opportunity for themselves they see the fall of the, the European nations mm -hmm. you know they, right. they see that the popula their population is dying out mm -hmm. they see that their military is getting weaker they're seeing all kind of things so they're stepping their game up like when you look at the list of like top military naval uh, top Country as far as investment, mm -hmm. development, these countries have been coming out of the woodworks for the last six uh, decades. You know, I even remember um, during my parents' age, uh, based on the history, you know, mm -hmm. since I wasn't living then, a lot of, uh, you know, you're talking about a lot of um, indentured workers mm -hmm. from India and China came, was brought by the British, Brit by the British uh, Empire all over the places, Jamaica, uh, Guyana, mm -hmm. um, Tanzania. Uh, South uh, South Africa, you know, uh, and literally, and when they put them there, you know, they didn't leave. They didn't leave. <laughs> they didn't leave. Do you know what they did, brother? What they did? Because because I because I see today from my parents' age, because my parents were born in the fifties, mm -hmm. they are running those countries. They literally put their money together, mm. and they like, okay, we're just gonna buy this building, buy this, thing. and next thing you know, they have major influence in the country. Mm -hmm. I can see that. So Definitely. you're telling people that. If we wait a few more decades, we're going to have nothing and we're going to own nothing. So when people like myself is putting my, my all into making these moves so we can have land in Africa. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not, it, it's the, it's the literally thing about our future. Like, you know, I'm a part of this race to us and I'm, I'm part of the, you know, the black energy of people. I'm part of the sure. diaspora. I'm part sure. of whatever you call us, you know, right, you're right. part of it. You know, you call an African or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you know and, and, you know, you feel like it's your duty. Mm -hmm. To literally contribute, and if you don't contribute, your children, your child, your family have nothing in the future. Right. And, it, and people think this is a joke. It's like this can easily just happen just like that. It's happening. And because if we just stay back and we become consumers, it's happening. so that's what I'm telling people. We have the land. We build industries. We become producers. We grow food. We you know we do all the things that we need. Why do we need to import all these things from Asian nations? I'm saying. Why do though, we even need to import food from Asian I'm nations? Saying, though, is this crazy? Who is really homeless though? Because I'm looking at it's a lot of homelessness going on. Oh, uh, here in America, yeah. Yeah, I'm some. And another thing about the homeless too, they ain't dead, and they ain't taking no shot. They not <laughs> they not social distancing, right? And they definitely ain't washing their hands. And none of them are dead throughout all this pan pandemic that's going on now. Interesting, right? They ain't pulling up bodies of homeless people. They're watching these people numbers on the screen, but they're not pulling up homeless people. 
Homeless people are in numbers. They just had to move a gang of them the other day off of the Capitol building. Oh, wow, they're rolling like that. Yeah, yeah downtown Atlanta they, ain't no they joke, took over man. the Capitol building. I mean, <laughs> wow. <laughs> basically, downtown Atlanta, which in most cities that's right it, now, that's is, their is, ground. Is, is, is homeless shelters. Oh. Like, the whole downtown is homeless right now. There's no businesses going on downtown. Since this uh, George Floyd thing, when they came and broke all this stuff up and the communities up, a lot of business never reopened again. Oh, wow. So, in this day and time, we're looking at a time where is that a lot of people are homeless. You understand throughout the evictions and all these things that happened, people lost their jobs, jobs and went out of business. So people's income is out, right? Some people, yeah, behind the screen and, you know, making money still from home, so they call it. But the reality of the day, how are you going to be making money from home when you don't have a home? Serious. If the rent is 1500 to 2200 per month, and you only still making less than $10 an hour, even less than $15 an hour, how will you survive? You gotta be about 40 out of that place, man. You see what I'm saying? It, so, and then, and then, then now they got us on this independent vibe. So everybody's about themselves. Right now, everybody's loving themselves. It's Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> Out there loving themselves because nobody ain't loving them, right? But the end of the day is, our collective strength is not even in numbers. We're not even one house and every, you know, we're not in families and houses like we was in the beginning of times. It's like one person in one house, one person in a whole apartment. You understand? So at the end of the day, we independently spending all this money. That's going to bring a lot of homelessness, brethren. And that's what the system is designed to make us lose. You understand? When we're supposed to be gaining. But if we take this time and this money and invest it in Africa, We'll always have something for ourselves that in generations. Point, that you know is what I mean? Point, so family. I'm thankful to Serious. hear because that's really what it's about. How can we utilize this time and money? Right now they got people ready to invest their money in the metaverse. A place that ain't even real. <laughs> right? Yeah, you exactly. wanna spend money, real cash money on something that ain't even real. But then the land that's right there waiting for you that you can actually own for ninety nine years. Yeah, and the real land versus you. This is not virtual reality. This right. is like real land. And then in that virtual world, you ain't, you can't eat that. <laughs> you can't eat those fruit in the virtual world tree, right? <laughs> care what you pull out out there. I don't care what it look like. You can't eat that. You can't smoke that. You can't live that, right? So the whole fullness is we got to develop something for ourselves and let these people world go, because it's a fake, phony, false reality. The only reality is the land. We need to own land again. And that's what we're not doing. We're not investing in the land like my brother here is doing. Getting people to come together and save money by working together to work the land. You can't work it all by yourself. You need a team. We got we, we to have too have a much stuff team. independent. We got to get organized and centralized so we're working together. And that's so what we can really develop the land the way it's supposed to. So what he's doing is showing you a blueprint of what we can do all over the world. You understand? And this is where we are now. We're looking at this blueprint. You know what I mean? What can we develop and how can we work with Africa to benefit our generations to come? So I'm thankful for ones even tuning in because uh, this was a powerful build, man. Yes, brother. I want you to also tell us more about this visa. Like, how can we apply and get a visa? Because most people don't realize in order to even go to Africa or certain places, you need a visa. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying to everyone, um, that they're going to have to be open to some reading and joining our calls and things. But I want you on our website, Africa, for the Africans.org. If you click on the Ghana link, the Tanzania link, or the, the Gambia link, uh, you come up on a link... Um, Outside of tour overview, general terms, and itinerary, it will say visa. Once you click on it, it does give you step-by-step -step details for the visa process. Mm -hmm. And the visa process is different for all three countries and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can go to uh, example since I'm wearing Tanzania shirt. The Tanzania visa is $100 for one year. See. And it's a multiple entry visa. But the good thing about the Tanzania visa is my favorite visa process for one reason. Okay. You don't have to mail in your passport. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mail in your, your passport style photos. And you don't have to send anything else. So all of those things are things that you'd upload after filling out all of your required information. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the information for the people who are inviting you. Like Those are the things that we just have typed up already. And it tells you step by step. Mm -hmm. you know, kind of like in a sample application. So that's what I have for all three countries mm -hmm. to help you get through it. And then the only thing that individuals will need is a flight itinerary. And then once you just 
start with that process of the visa, I would just get your flight uh, itinerary based on the, the fact that we do group bookings with the airlines. Mm -hmm. I'll just generate a flight booking, flight, uh, flight itinerary from there and then you just submit it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it becomes a situation where you're inputting your personal details and then also the details that we're, we're telling you to put in. And then if you get stuck, we'll help you. Right. But I've helped at least over 500 or more people with Give visas time. over the last 15 years, uh, mainly in Ghana, but in many other countries mm -hmm. and, um, and things like that, wow. including even Brazil. And so it becomes an administrative process where you take your time, you read through everything, that way you can help and explain things to your brothers and sisters a little easier. So, so those are the things that they get when question, they travel with us. Quick question about uh, uh, the traveling, because like I said, you was dealing with this pre-COVID and after, and on this COVID time. How is it to travel to after Africa? Do brothers and sisters need to get a shot to go to Africa? They need to get uh, their COVID test, and the COVID test is usually 72 hours before you leave. Um, that need to have a result that's showing uh, 72 hours in between the time mm -hmm. of your traveling, right. uh, it's the negative. Right. Uh, so, so you just need to take the test. You don't need to take the shot. Um, some countries may require vaccination now, but since we're talking about so many countries, mm -hmm. I don't want to make a list of countries that has certain requirements. But the most important thing for anyone that would, before they travel to a country is to make sure that they read the information clear on the embassy website or mm -hmm. the airport website for that country. The and then, embassy website. Yeah, embassy website and then airline, the airport website. Airport, airport website. website is going to be the major part of any incoming or outgoing traffic as far as people and mm -hmm. things like that. So they're going to have those requirements for you to enter the country mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, so, so these are the things that, you know, based on who you're traveling with. If you travel with us, it's simple because I'm going to have these things ready for you immediately. Mm -hmm. Before you spend any money, everything is ready for you. Truth, right. uh, that's the way I like to do business, right. whether it's land or tours, because at the end of the day, that way you can't come back to me and say anything to me because you, those are the terms up front. And then, you know, if you're doing land with us, you have to sign paperwork because it's a legal situation, just like your legal lease and things mm -hmm. like that. True. And, and things like that. So we tell individuals, <clears throat> let's, 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 let's be responsible and accountable as black people. Right. Let's stop with all the little childish stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I know I'm a small time businessman and I'm not a Fortune 500 white business corporation, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? Uh, do I have less value as a person than that CEO that runs a Fortune 500 company? And so I'm telling people, you guys don't do that to the, those, those corporations. Right. You know what I mean? But don't. then when a, a black man is building a company, you forget, you just look at, oh, well, your general terms and things don't matter. Um, and, and then just feel like they want to push you around and, and, you know, and kind of treat you in a kind of way because they spent money with you right. and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the same thing I tell people when they even travel with us. You show up at Delta Airlines uh, about 20 minutes late for the flight. That you know that pilot is not gonna come back to the gate and get you because you know because you feel like you're special. Right. So it's the same yes. rules we operate with mm -hmm. in, in travel, real estate, and business. Mm -hmm. Only difference I would say, brother, is we're a lot nicer and more lenient. And even then, some of our people just take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm always telling people we love you, and this is the reason why we build business and we make it organized. Because some people, if you deal with some of the, the white companies to do business with, some of our people are not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're literally going to sure. lose your money. You're literally just going to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you need, sometimes it's best to deal with a brother because, you know, one thing about me, I'm going to look out for you. True, and the only true. thing I tell people is like, whatever we agree on, let's, yeah, yeah, let's, let's work it out, mm -hmm. you know, but that's the difference you're going to have versus a white corporation. They're not going to look out for you. You're not, you're not going to have that relationship. Right. And I pride my, my business on building relationship with people. So most of the time I'm working. So whenever I travel, you know, along with my family and other friends, you know, we go out. We, we enjoy a good time together as brothers and sisters sure. and, and socialize. You know, we sit down sometimes, there's 15 of us at a big table. And then I got all kind of white folks, wherever we are looking at us. There's like, is there so, something secret going on? And right. but all of this is a group of black people coming together and enjoying themselves. Enjoying themselves. But it's not, right. it's, it's not popular when you go to certain resorts where it's not much of us. Mm -hmm. You know, but I tell people, it's like, they can think whatever you want to think. You, you, you know, we were divided by your people, but hey, we find all the common reasons and all the common importance to come together, work together, True. and look out for each other. And that's because we all have children, and we want to see our children go to live this strong, beautiful life where your young, you know, young boys marry beautiful young 
black women True. and build black families together. Truth and and let's take it to that light, take it to that level, man. And it, I just feel like we can do it. We but we just have to it, set man. and be the example. be the example. Like, I can't be out there chasing white women and then tell my son, you need to marry a black empress. True, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. But tell us some of your, new, your trips, your journeys you got coming up. Uh, yes, yeah, so our family. So we have the incredible Ghana May 24th to June 5th journey. And we have the December 24th the January 5th journey. So you know, the date numbers are the same and they're a few months apart. Mm -hmm. uh, so those journeys uh, right there okay. is my flagship journey. You know, and we're going we're gonna to do this incredible repatriation investment conference that we always do. Mm -hmm. A lot of networking. We're just going to enjoy, um, you know, we're going to enjoy a social nightlife of One Africa where we're just on the resort. We're doing cards, dominoes. And we're just making our own entertainment and things. We're going up to Kumasi and there's lots of culture there and mm -hmm. things. And, you know, you're in Accra, this is the busy city. You're going yeah. to different parts of Accra. So those are the journeys that we're going on. And then uh, Tanzania for November, November Tanzania 17th November. to the 28th. And I'm right. just looking forward to all three of so those. So those how, are the three how, we have. How soon do the people have to uh, put in before they can actually go on the journey? How yeah, what work? I have is set up to where a year before you join the journey, you can make commitment as early as a year. Okay. And the latest people can make commitment is two months before we travel because that's when the balance is due. And that's when we're trying to make all payments, set everything up and things like that. But beyond that, we just uh, use the deposit to get things going. Okay. And then to lock in on a commitment. So that's at least what they can start with. And then individuals can pace themselves. So in and general how, terms... how much would it be to travel for those amount? You said it was what? Uh, uh, the, the tours that we have um, uh, for May and November is 3800 includes your flight. Uh, December is a lot more expensive, so we had to up the price, so that's $4,000, because the tickets alone for December is $2,000. True, true, true. You got to yeah, pay for the like, ticket. Like, serious. Yeah, uh, the ticket is the most expensive thing, because, you know, then, it's you know, expensive to go to Africa. You know, it's cheap to go everywhere else, but it's expensive to go to Africa. Why yeah, is that? You know, you had in transportation, you have a full staff, mm. you have uh, hotel accommodations, you have entrance, you have you know, meals and things you set up. So mm -hmm. you're literally setting up a full package to the highest level right. to show your brothers and sisters the best time around all countries. True. And then I literally put the program together from scratch. And like I mentioned to people, the tour books that we have on the website, when they go on the website... You have access to the tour books, digital books, the same mm -hmm. books I gave you, digital. Ah, digital. You know, See, to dude. where you can even download it from the website. Y'all make so, sure y'all check out his website too, man. Make sure y'all get locked in there and see yeah. this because if you're an African, you need to be focused on the continent right now, you know. And this is the best way to do it, from the grounds, you know. We got to start from the boots touching the grounds, you know what I mean. And this is what we got to be focused on, you know. Getting these wheels up too because these wheels need to be up so we can be flying too. There you we go. gotta be comfortable flying again. You know what I mean? No one say that we can be in the sea. We don't have to always be in the air, but we need to be in the air so we can do things more globally right now. You know what I mean? And we need that. Now people need that. So we're gonna seal up this episode, man. I'm thankful my brother. <laughs> Yo, coming brethren. Through, man. Give thanks yes, for family. The Appreciate your energy, family. Yes, thanks for uh, Y'all already know. We and do always here to give updates on what we're doing in Africa. For real, for real. We got to keep this thing going because we got to keep people informed of what's yes, going on. Yes, always, man. man. Serious, man. Really because it's, a, it's a lot of misinformation and bad information out there online. So mm -hmm. what I'm always telling people, family, if you want information, go to the source. Mm -hmm. Because even your brother, even on Facebook, they're duplicating your, 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 your Facebook page. They're stealing your accounts. They're True. doing all kind of stuff. So I'm telling, like, if I need to know what's going on here at mm -hmm. this empire right here, I'm coming to holler at you. True, true. I'm not right. going to holler at nothing else in, in that. I'm not going to have see. people s sending me fake messages and things. So, family, it's real out there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of phony stuff going on out there. Reach out to the people directly. Talk with them. Build a relationship with you, them and things like that. And that's what we specialize in. So, true. we have your back, family. Anyone that's looking to connect to the continent, reach out to me. And this is my direct number, 404-931-9429. If I don't answer, just leave me a message or send me a message on WhatsApp. And my goal is to communicate with you and make time to where we can go to this family. I got your back. Let's do this, man. Let's continue the nation building process. We got the land. Now it's time to build upon it. Straight nation building. Truth and rights. Yes, family. So we're going to seal it up. We're going to say Africa for the Africans. Africa for the Africans, family. At home and abroad. Peace and blessings, y'all. And y'all tuning out to what? The Think, the Think Champs, Champs, family. One love. Think Champs, family.